Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a short update on markets by RRG Research. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We're going to take a very quick look at the very near term developments in a few stock market indexes, indices. Let's start with the, uh, by the way, I'm recording this after the close of the US markets. So uh, in between market opening tomorrow morning for Europe. Starting with the um, NASDAQ, it, it started off as looking a, like a good, a good day, but at, towards the end of the session, we actually got a pretty nasty decline and that's visible on this daily chart as well. If I zoom it in a little bit, you can see this last candle here, um, which closed towards the low of the session um, uh, today. And that is not a super good sign in my opinion. You can see that we, we tried to take out that previous high here of the 22nd, didn't manage, moved to the lower end, and we're at risk of forming a very short-term double top here. If you look at the RSI and the MACD, and I need to do, I need to zoom out a little bit, you can see here that the RSI is, uh, is showing what we call a negative divergence. That's a sort of a warning signal that at least a pause, but possibly uh, a slight turnaround decline is on the horizon. So. From this perspective, I think that the upside potential for the NASDAQ 100 in the very near term is going to be very, very limited at the moment uh, because of that divergence and the fact that the MACD is about to roll over. So what can we expect? I think that the level that you see here, so the low was uh, 159021, say 159020, 15920. Um, if we take that out tomorrow, um, early in the session, we're at risk for a further decline towards the first support level, which is around 15,720. And that's actually the gap area that, um, that occurred between the 13th and the 14th, this area here. This is a pretty decent support area, at least for the near term. So the longer term picture is still pretty good, but in the near term, I expect the NASDAQ to see some form of consolidation, maybe even decline with the gap area here, the higher end of the gap and the lower end of the gap as important support levels. We go take a look at the hourly chart and you can see this a little bit more detail. And, and the RSI doesn't really tell me much because it's right in the middle of 30 and 70. So that's kind of neutral. And you can see the same here on this hourly chart over the last week that we kind of stuck between uh, two barriers. So the extremes here, that's around 16,120. And the lower boundary here is around 15,930. Obviously, uh, as I said, coming from the daily chart, there is a little bit more risk. So I would be focusing on downside price uh, action. Also, when you see that intraday, so this is today's price action, or yesterday when you see this, um, we actually started a series of lower highs and lower lows. So the previous low, intraday low was taken out here, uh, which probably opens up the way for a decline towards that 16,930 area to begin with. If you look at the MACD, that's actually in a, you know, falling trends for like two weeks already, uh, almost. So outlook for the NASDAQ, not too positive, near term, very likely some uh, decline, some price depreciation before we can start looking at the upside again. If we take a look at the Dow Jones index, also starting at the daily chart, and we can see that it is running into resistance. And um, what I'm watching here is the peak that was set in the summer, end of July, starting of August. And the level is 35.6, let's say 35.670. That's a pretty serious resistance level. If you look at how that the last bit of that rally uh, went, and you can see that over the last, say, 10 days, we had a steady move higher, but the RSI didn't really move higher. It stayed in that overbought area, moving sideways. So it's, it's not pointing down, so it's not really a negative divergence, but I kind of want to call it a semi-divergence. There is pressure on the market, that's for sure. And when you look at the MACD, you see that it is in the same area um, of... of 
uh, level wise as where uh, the previous high was set and it's it looks as if it's starting to roll over you can see that the difference between those two lines is already rolling over so there's definitely overhead resistance for the dow jones index as well if you look at a potential target I would say 35k, 35,000 is a very good level to watch. You can see how that was a low in that topping formation in the summer and then it acted as resistance twice and then actually not too long ago, one to three days pressure against 35 before it broke. So that old resistance is now very likely to come back as support. Upside potential for the time being limited to 35, 6, 30, 35, 6, well, what is that? 35,660, let's call it like that. If we look at the hourly chart and you can see that very nice steady move higher that we saw over the last few weeks, I have to say, uh, it's a very narrow range. And you can see here that there is a divergence building up. You can see those two highs were higher. Uh, what's also kind of a sign of weakness is that these highs the last highs were not able to touch the upper boundary of that channel so it was like one two three four five whatever you want to call it a very reliable rising support line and the last part of that trend didn't reach the upper boundary of that channel which means that sellers were coming in at an earlier level if you look at the rsi you can see that those two peaks were set at the same level while the price was going higher that's a uh, negative divergence and it looks as if at the end of the session yesterday the market actually took out that rising support line opening up the way for at least a temporary decline the macd is showing you the same picture also uh, pointing to lower prices we go to europe to european market so here is the um, the FTSE, the FTSE 100 uh, obviously that will very likely take an effect take spilling over from the close of the u.s market so the I'm going to take into effect the, uh, the weakness that we saw towards the close of the UK markets spilling over into Europe when we opened uh, this morning. And looking at the price chart of the FTSE, you can see that it has been trading in a pretty wide trading range for uh, one, two, three, four, like half a year already. And then the last two days, we, we broke out of an upward move, a series of higher highs and higher lows. That trend is now broken. The, the session in the UK didn't end too well yesterday either. And you can see the, the RSI is kind of neutral. There's not much saying, but the MACD is rolling over very close to the zero level, uh, pointing to some negative price action. Looking at this chart here, I think we can conclude that the upside potential for the FTSE is limited and that the risk is definitely there pointing to the level of so there's a support area here between these two red lines that is uh 7220 and this is around let's say 7 to 90. those are the the support levels that i'd be watching and if we make this slightly longer chart then you can see how nice that trading range is we're probably not going to make it any higher so i'm going to expect a setback for the FTSE toward that range as i just mentioned so either the upper boundary or the lower boundary you can see that there are quite a few touch points on the lower end as well for that um, for that support area so negative price action from the us spilling over into the uk very likely going to point the uh, FTSE lower at the start of the session uh, today, I have to say. If we do that on an hourly chart, you can see it in a little bit more detail, but you can also see how very nicely that market has been behaving between um, upper and lower boundaries in a trading range. This is a slightly shorter trading range than the one that we've just been looking, but it's quite um, interesting to see how the FTSE is respecting these horizontal levels very, very well. Um, yesterday we kind of played around with the 7,460, 7,460 area, 7,460, 7,450. That's the resistance level I'm watching. So that means that the upside potential is also limited here. And the trigger for the downside, as I just pointed out on that daily chart, will very likely uh, accelerate when we take out this low here, um, which is... 
7,408. Let's say 7,405, 7, just to be sure, uh, is the previous low. If we take that out, that'll probably open up the way for uh, quite a bit more downside, and that could bring us back to levels that we've seen uh, at the start of the month, which is just above 7,300. Uh, I, I hope you agree with me that this series of lower highs, especially the lower highs, what means that the sellers are pretty aggressive. They're coming in at lower levels. They're willing to accept lower prices for the stock that they're selling. And the, uh, the buyers so far have managed to, to hold it around this support area. But when that breaks and sellers become more aggressive, we will see a little bit more downside. And then we're going to wrap it up with the German DAX index. Actually, uh, probably, well, from the four that we're talking about today, the strongest market. So at the end of the session, you saw that the DAX actually broke higher, uh, which is uh, a good thing. Um, interesting, by the way, uh, big difference between uh, the FTSE and the DAX. But what's not, not super worrying, but you can see how the RSI is at very high levels. So the upside potential for the DAX, if it can hold this, this rally, will be the uh, level of the highs that were set in the summer. So this is June and this is July, and the level is uh, 16,440. Let's say 16,500 uh, around that area. Doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't care about 10 points in the DAX. The good news for the DAX is that it broke this resistance area, which is now expected to come back as support. And that is the area around, and the high here is uh, 1640, 16,040, 16,040, 16,050. That is expected to act as support. The real trigger for downside movement, in my opinion, is when we take out this previous low here. And that low is around, 15915. 15, That's the low of two days ago, the low of the 28th of November. When the DAX breaks that level, we're in for a decline back towards the 15500. But for the time being, the DAX looks to be the strongest of those four markets with that break towards the end of the session. I'm going to take a little bit of the glamour away by looking at that hourly chart because here you can see how it started that rally right at the beginning of the session and then slightly edged higher towards the end. But the RSI here you see is building up some sort of a divergence, didn't really manage to keep up and towards the end it's really coming down. So. Um, Nevertheless, the, 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 the view that the DAX is the strongest of those markets still stands. But with the weakness of the US market spilling over into Europe, if we take out, if we get out of this small rising channel, I think that the first target for the DAX will be 16,040. If we hold there, there is new upside potential. If that gives way, the scenario that I just pointed out on the daily chart will get into play. I wish you a very good training session. This wraps it up for this short video by RRG Research, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again at a new video very, very soon.